Con Barbara Mijon, Guten Tag, Buenas Eras, Bonsoir, Arraza Aldeón, Buenas Tardes. Estamos listos para empezar la conferencia. We are ready. Okay, just a few words to tell you that today we joined two main objectives over here. We worked together only two weeks ago, only 20 days ago, to to manifest our our pride for the successful launch of HTV9. And today it's the next, last but not least, step to to get the the camera on board the ISS. So we are going to connect also with our people that are over there in the hall supporting the astronauts' task that is about to finish. So we will see how it goes. No? And the second objective is that uh, we wanted to join you to talk about environment and space. We think this topic of uh, uh, green environment protection and uh, how space can contribute uh, to, to this added value is fantastic. And we have the main uh, or some of the main uh, actors in uh, in the world, or at least internationally, from the public and private sector to talk about that. So, welcome everyone. We are so proud to have the support uh, today for that. And uh, let me just uh, give the floor to one person that has uh, committed uh, her life to innovation. Uh, she has committed part of her life to our small company. She's making it big. I think uh, the, the happening of today, as a, a small example, couldn't be understood uh, if we didn't know uh, who was uh, this person, this person that perhaps 500 companies want her to be the president. And this is the Fortune 500 companies. Luckily, uh, she's the, the chairwoman, the president of Satlantis. So we are so proud of her and we can explain why Satlantis is today here. Christina, the floor is yours. Thank you, Fanto, for such a kind introduction. Let me start officially with such uh, important event for, for us, uh, welcoming Your Majesty the King of Spain, Deputy Prime Minister, Director General of the European Commission, Salburo Estimatua, distinguished invited speakers and friends from all, from all over, Koichi, Jim, Toshi, Luigi, David, and Masa, Dear guests, yes, as uh, Juanto has explained, only 20 days, days ago, we got together to celebrate a remarkable event, the successful launch from Tanegashima of the Japanese mission HCV-9, carrying our ISIN camera to the ISS. And um, almost five, years, five years, uh, days later, the connotatory cargo transporter successfully uh, docked into the ISS in another exciting event captured by the robotic arm operated by the ISS commander, Chris Cassidy. We then witnessed the safe arrival of Bob uh, Bengten and Doc Harley, who docked nine days ago uh, on board the SpaceX Crew Dragon. And today, finally, everything is ready. Ready for the big days of uh, Atlantis. Commander Cassidy is now operating at that moment the robotic arm to install our ISIN camera outside the Japanese Kibo module of the ISS. While he's performing this uh, delicate task, we have organized a roundtable with our distinguished speaker, and at the end of the session, we will connect with Commander Cassidy. Uh, I had the, the chance, the chance to talk beforehand uh, with our Deputy Prime Minister, President, uh, Minister Rivera about uh, what could be relevant topics for discussion at this uh, roundtable. All of a sudden, she proposed me to connect space and environment, and we immediately started to work together on this idea. Climate change, global warming, ocean contamination, and air pollution are challenges that have moved from being a regional concern to pose a major threat worldwide. The solution to such global problems requires global te technology, a technology that can monitor our entire planet and provide the objective data needed for needed by international, international agencies to implement both global policies and, very important, accountability instruments. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, Earth observation from space is the global tool we need from environmental monitoring and protection worldwide. Today, we are here together 
to take a step forward in this direction, we need more precise technologies, more affordable technologies, more ubiquitous technologies to monitor our planet from space, unimpeded by national frontiers or obscure industrial interests. The ISIN camera from Satantis promises to deliver submeter resolution in a multiple spectral brand specifically designed to detect the plastics contaminating our rivers and oceans and the, and the methane polluting our air. On board uh, the new constellation of small satellites, ISIM will provide observation of uh, specific targets on uh, Earth every, every few hours. It's really that's very impressive. Every few hours, and I encourage the space industry to hurry up, to evolve, to cooperate through international co co collaborations and develop new precise and affordable instrumentation for Earth observation from space. Our planet needs our response. Our politicians need the tools to develop viable policies that are a large extent dependent on this technology. So, Commander Cassidy, we need ISIN to start observing our planet Earth as soon as possible. And now, I let the floor to a remarkable person, committed, experienced, loyal to the institution he represents, sensitive to the problems, to the challenges, and to the people. And he is Daniel Calleja, Director General of uh, Environment, the key topic for Europe in the next decade, for sure. But who can imagine who could dream that the DG of uh, environment has a deep and thorough knowledge of space? Yes, really, this is unique, very unique. Daniel has also been DG responsible for space sector in Europe. We could not have a bit a better keynote speaker today, really. Daniel, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, dear Christina. I would like to thank all the participants in this uh, in this very important event, and I would like to say it is a pleasure to be with you here uh, as Director General for the Environment of the European Commission, but also having had some experience in the past in space policy. Uh, I would like to first of all congratulate all the participants because it is really a, a very symbolic moment to be here to witness in this online digital event to celebrate the arrival of a Spanish optical telescope to the International Space Station. Of course, my first words would have to be uh, words of solidarity. We are all meeting under difficult conditions because of the pandemics, because of COVID-19. So I would like to express my solidarity to all those who are suffering from this pandemic. And I would like to focus on three points during my intervention. First of all, I would like to recall the importance of international cooperation for space policy and mention some of the examples from the European experience, which is the, I think, the area which I know best from my responsibilities in Brussels. Second, I would like to talk about the role of space policy towards the green economy and I think Christina was mentioning rightly these elements. And third, I would like to mention the importance of innovation for the space sector. Uh, if I start with the first point, I would like to say that there are few areas of our economy which show the value of international cooperation other than the space sector. The magnitude of the resources we need, the scale of research and development, the need to pull all this cooperation together clearly shows that we need to work together in the space sector. And today's event is very symbolic and is the expression of this global cooperation. A Spanish company, a European company, with uh, just developed this technology, this camera, which is going to be assembled in the Japanese module by of the International Space Station, by U.S. astronauts. I think this is a unique combination. It's a very symbolic uh, uh, measure of what space means and how when we work together, when we develop global cooperation, we can advance our societies. And if you move this to the European experience, Europe's 
space policy is a very good example of this. The European Union, working with the European Space Agency, working with the member states, has developed unique systems for Earth monitoring, for satellite position, which could not have been developed by any individual country. They are owned by the European Union and they are serving a service to the rest of the world. The importance of Copernicus, the importance of Galileo, they are symbols of European integration. They are symbols of European projects. They are symbols of successful cooperation also with the rest of the world. You know, Copernicus is setting global standards and it's offering the most accurate data of planet Earth 24 hours, seven days a week. This is used worldwide and this is valued worldwide. Copernicus is also one of the biggest data providers in the world with more than 12 terabytes of high quality, full, free and open data every day. And we want to continue developing the technology because Earth observation is crucial. We also have Galileo, which is the very important position, global positioning uh, service, uh, satellite service. And we have spent a lot of time deploying the satellites, the infrastructure and the software, but we are still, we are now in an initial service mode. Galileo has more than 1.5 billion Euro users worldwide. And this number is growing every day. And this would not have been possible without the cooperation with the European Space Agency, also with the sectors. I want to pay tribute to the role of industry in this area, but I want also to pay tribute to the work of our international partners, working with the US, working with Japan. Thanks to their cooperation, we are developing technologies which are rendering very important services. And I think I would like now to move to my second point, is how can these services link to the environmental, to the sustainability dimensions? And we have to start by recognizing that we are facing major planetary challenges. The crisis on resources, the depletion of resources is degrading our planet, degradation of our ecosystems, one million species at risk, 60% of the habitats, deforestation, illegal logging, pollution in our oceans. We know that plastics by 2050 will be, there will be more plastics than fish in the seas. The problem of climate change, the problem of fighting against global warming, all these are challenges which we have to face together, which are global challenges. We need global responses. And here, I think it is crucial the contribution of space technology, of space applications. From air quality, monitoring the data of air quality in our cities, to have the best quality of life for our citizens, to have a healthy environment, to smart farming, precision farming based on satellite technology, natural disaster prevention, thanks to Earth observation, to take the immediate responses where this is needed, Renewable energies applications, which can develop and facilitate the, the development of these technologies. Or CO2 monitoring. I think all these uh, policies would be, will be impossible to develop in the future without the contribution of space technology. And space observation in particular has a long history, which has helped us to protect our planet. I want to recall the problems we had with the depletion with the growing hole in the ozone layer. It was thanks to the Earth observation that allowed us to identify the problem, to monitor and to realize the threat for the environment and for our lives. And this was crucial to agreeing on the Montreal Protocol to, as an international treaty to deal with this issue, to change our industries, so that we would uh, stop using substances that were responsible for the ozone depletion, to share the burden and to have an international response. This global success in addressing the crisis of ozone would not have been possible without the space technologies. And we have many other spaces, but any, many other examples, the global deforestation, the pollution of the oceans, 
the shrinking of the Arctic ice caps, the certification, the water challenge. All these challenges are global, and in all these challenges, we see a very, very important role for space cooperation, for space applications. In Europe, we are launching a European space strategy of 16 billion euros in the next years. More needs to be done to turn all this data into information and the knowledge we need to take action. We can inform farmers about the effect of their practices on the environment. We can better enforce environmental law. We can inform citizens better about the quality of the air and the environment around them. And we can give scientists the information they need to study all these challenges. So within the Green Deal, within the European Green Deal, we want to place the environment, sustainability, global warming as a top priority, also as an opportunity for economic development. And I believe that the contribution of the space sector is very important. I want also to mention something very important. And it's not only the green challenge, it's also the digital challenge. The green and the digital challenges are the challenges of our future. And space is also an enabler for the digital transition. We are developing in Europe this high performance computing to generate models and simulations for our planet based on Earth observations. And one of the most exciting projects is the planet Earth concept. We want to gather all the data, work with the scientists based on this space data to develop a very high precision digital model of the Earth. A digital twin model of the Earth which can allow us to identify the challenges, but also, more importantly, to provide and to anticipate the solutions. Final point is the role of innovation. If we want space to benefit more to society in Europe, we need a new approach to stay to space innovation. We need a new mindset. We cannot miss the next disruptive technology. And here I want to pay tribute to the King of Spain, thanks to his leadership in Cotec and in innovation, also to Cristina Garmendia for her role in this area, because we need to accept to take more risk. We need to develop an anchor customer strategy so that our companies are able to benefit earlier from contracts. This is what NASA is doing already. I know in Japan there are also very important projects, and we need to be able to do this in Europe. We need a new space entrepreneurship initiative to provide business tools for young companies developing space technology using space data and offer business acceleration investor matchmaking and seed funding i think this is something where we would like also to do more internationally not only within the european union but also more globally in conclusion investing in space investing in space technologies investing in space applications will change our lives. It will allow us to conduct our societies and our economies in a more efficient and in a more sustainable way. And the most important thing, it will allow us to preserve a healthy planet. We only have one planet. And if we destroy it, the planet will continue, but we will not be able to conduct our lives in, uh, in the Earth. So. It is extremely important, it will be crucial over the coming years to invest in space because investing in space is the best guarantee for our future and we need to do this together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Daniel. Uh, I think Christina was really, really right uh, when reminding that you were DG uh, in enterprise, industry, uh, including space and now environment. So we can see when you have touched the three points, uh, the remarkable uh, recommendations that you have made. Okay, let me move fast because uh, we have a fixed timing at 12.30, the connection to ISS must be done. So I would like to, to, to put a question to Arantxa Tapia. Eskerrik asko zailburu bihotz bihotz ez, berriro ere egun garritzazu honetan gurekin bat egitea. Zailburu. Being a bus company that arrives first in space with a miniaturized camera, and perhaps not talking about us, what is the story that uh, 
that this transmit to the world about uh, the, the ecosystem of uh, industry and technology of, uh, of the Basque Country. First of all, Egunon in Basque, uh, good morning and good afternoon for those who are not here in, in Europe. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to for being here again with you, with Juanto, with Cristina. Thank you very much. And uh, I think that we have to say that there is a story of more than four decades working together, public and private sector, uh, trying to install an industrial policy. An industrial policy that uh, started, uh, as I say, more than four decades ago, uh, with the uh, first uh, policy on clusters that was developed in Europe, was installed here in the, in the Basque Country, and uh, working together innovation, technology, industrial policies very oriented to, to market needs, and at the same time working in a, with an international view, because being so a small country, we have to work together with uh, good uh, alliances, as you have uh, developed with this uh, project, and we have to be very, very connected to other countries and other places. So uh, a complete uh, and uh, a strong network of uh, centers dedicated to technology, very oriented to excellence on one way, on the other, on uh, market orientation, of course, trying to develop new businesses and very specialized. So working all together, I think that uh, based on our strengths, we have been able to develop and to diversify our industry and we are now here. So I think that uh, this is a success story of working together everybody in the in the Basque country. And as I say, private uh, companies, of course, public administrations are, as the Basque government, and why not financial system trying to, to involve all agents in the, in the Basque country. And I think this is the, the main issue. And uh, I have to, to say that uh, the education system is a key issue for us, um, considering vocational training, of course, but uh, as you well know, Cristina and Juanto, we are a country of engineers, and I think that uh, it has been very important also. Thank you very much, uh, Saelburu, uh, for your kind words and for joining us uh, in the debate. I know you are urged with uh, some duties and you left uh, the Regional Council of Ministers to join us, so, so thank you again. Let me just uh, uh, review uh, how is the process of installing the camera, because uh, we have the limit time of 12.30, uh, but let's connect to our team that is supporting the ISS guys. So, uh, Stuart and Marco, are you over there? Hello? Can you tell Hello. us Hello. how is the task being, being, uh, being accomplished today? Well, the, the, so far, so good. Uh, the procedure is being followed. There's no issues at all. Uh, everything is going very smoothly. Uh, and Commander Chris Cassidy is doing it step, one step at a time. Okay, so where, where are we now? Where, where's the station moving through? So I'll, I'll pass you to Mark on that one because he's, uh, he's closer to the screen than me. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. Now, as you can, as you can see from the image, the ISS is quite um, over the equator and uh, it is quite reaching the north, the north of, uh, of Africa. Is um, so in in uh, in few in few minutes it will be also in the visibility pattern, not visible, sure, but in the visibility pattern of um, um, of, of Spain. And uh, and uh, as you can see on the on the other image, the live image of the ISS. Um, okay. um, I mean, the the ISS now is uh, yes, that one. Oh. The ISS now is in sunlight, and uh, you can see I mean some solar panels in the oh. in the in clouds. Uh, unfortunately, we we can see clouds, but you can see. Um, down there, some images uh, took by the by the, the ISS while um, on his on his uh, on his route. Very and, good. Uh, and yes, all uh, as uh, as you are saying, all going smoothly. So 
Yeah, so we are very happy. We, we continue to follow the procedure. Okay, guys, thanks very much for the information. So we expect that 12.30, the task of uh, installation will be accomplished uh, with yeah. our uh, uh, colleagues uh, up there in the ISA. So, so thank you. Let, let's continue the debate. Let me introduce you to, to Bakata san. Uh, Koiki Bakata is a senior astronaut at JAXA, and he's the uh, senior representative in this, in this talk uh, from there. So first, I have to thank uh, deeply uh, the collaboration that we are hosting to, to, to proceed uh, to, to this uh, joint project. And I would like to ask you, uh, Koiki, um, the ISS is a privileged platform uh, to test uh, many new technologies that are coming into space. And you are now offering in orbit demonstration trips, part of which uh, Atlantis is involved in. So what is the, the, the main objective that the IOD program is fixing uh, for JAXA? First of all, uh, I would like to congratulate all of you uh, on the successful launch of the ISIM payload on the HTV-9 spacecraft last month, as well as the beginning of this uh, ISIM payload zone orbit experiment. Uh, in order to further expand the utilization of the Kibo module on the International Space Station, we are working towards uh, tapping into the vitality and the networks of the private sector. As uh, part of this effort, uh, we at JAXA uh, have selected the Space VD in March uh, 2019 last year as a service provider of Kibo's exposed facility services. As Atlantis is aiming to raise the technology readiness level or the TLL of the uh, equipment in a timely fashion in order to apply the icing technology to the uh, microsatellite the constellation market. I'm very pleased to see that Space VD bridges Kibo's uh, exposed facility utilization with Atlantis. And it was uh, significant that the handover of the hardware to JAXA was completed in only one year after the contract was made in January of 2019. And providing timely demonstration opportunities is one of the goals of Kibo utilization in order to support the uh, time critical commercial activities in the space industry, such as Atlantis. And JAXA expects many users to fully utilize the capacity of the Kibo module. We welcome more users from Europe where the space industry, especially SMEs are uh, rapidly growing. This year marks the 20th anniversary of the International Space Station's uh, human presence on board. Uh, Chris Cassidy, the commander of the space station, I was with him 11 years ago, assembling the Japanese exposed facility, the very module that the ISIM payload will be installed. So I'm very happy to be part of this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fakata san uh, Let me uh, give the floor to the other partner that uh, we have worked for a long year together to homologate the technology before even we could dream of flying, and that is NASA. So we have today the pressure to have some words from the Jim Morhart, the deputy NASA general administrator. Uh, today, uh, at this time, it's very, very early at NASA. So we have his, uh, his yesterday's video uh, as, a, as a testimony. Hello, my name is Jim Moorhard. I'm the Deputy Administrator at NASA. I'm up in Northern New Hampshire right now, so please excuse my attire. I'm glad I've got what we call the NASA meatball on me. Your Majesty, President Yamakawa, Director General Kayeha, distinguished guests, it's my pleasure to address you today. On May 20th, we witnessed JAXA's H-2 transfer vehicle lift off on a H-2B rocket from Japan's Tona Gashima Space Center for its voyage to the International Space Station. To quote Na NASA's Rob Navias, it was a flawless launch and a flawless climb to orbit. We thank JAXA for its partnership, congratulate it on its continued contributions and successes, and look forward to the next generation of spacecraft and rockets from Japan as JAXA pursues the H-3 rocket and the HTVX spacecraft. Congratulations also to Spain, a vital partner on the International Space Station through the International Space Agency, and Satlantis for the flight of the ISIM camera as part of the JAXA payload to the International Space Station on HTV-9. I'm incredibly pleased to see Spain contributing in such an innovative way each Earth observation demonstrates how vital space can be to our lives, impacting a diverse array of activities from agriculture to disaster relief. 
I applaud Spain's efforts to find new ways to use space to create a safer, more prosperous world. Isn't that what we're all trying to do right now? Last week, Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley, two of our astronauts, flew to the International Space Station on a next-generation vehicle developed under the auspices of NASA's commercial crew program. We've now entered a new era of increasing accessibility to the International Space Station, which will open the, up the benefits of the station to Spain and many more nations that have not traditionally benefited from this extraordinary orbital facility. Moving beyond Earth's orbit, NASA is eager to work with Japan and Spain through the Artemis program, which will land the first woman and next man on the moon by 2024. Artemis will leverage the international and commercial partners that we work with to achieve a sustainable and robust presence on the moon, preparing NASA and its partners for their first human mission to Mars. Again, congratulations to all of you, and together we'll write a new chapter in space exploration. This is really the beginning of a dawn of a new space age, and I'm so glad you're part of it. Thank you very much, Jim. So it seems that maybe in the end we can we can really twin uh, for, for, Hello. for for a while uh, the destiny of uh, of three continents into this uh, small but so so crucial event for us. Thank you, thank you again. Our next speaker, Fujibara-san, uh, um, uh, I would like to 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 talk to one champion uh, of uh, of the uh, international market in generally consultancy and IT services but also in particular uh, related to the geointelligence uh, services and Earth observation data. They are shareholder of us uh, through, through Everest. And uh, I would like to, to ask you, um, Fujibara-san, what is the, uh, the value that your activity from entity data internationally can bring to, in particular, environmental policies? This is the topic of today. And the global observatories that maybe the, the public sector will start to deploy and, and develop. The floor is yours. Okay, gracias, Juan. Uh, buenos días a todos. I'm Toshi <laughs> Fujiwara from IDETA. <laughs> uh, it is an honor to be in such an important event for Satlantis, Everest, and NTT Data Group. As you mentioned, at NTT Data Group, we always find solutions that will serve the best information demands of our clients. Our primary purpose is to help them to make decisions with more precise and relevant data. We all know that now environmental decisions are at the heart of the strategy of many corporations and global institutions. There are large needs to conveniently track and monitor corporate compliance with environmental policies. Nowadays, the accuracy and the availability of the information captured from the sky is increased thanks to all the advancement made on Earth observation and geo-intelligence technologies. In this regard, we believe the contribution of Satlantis has been significant. Uh, also, please let me add some other examples. In Japan, we NTT data owns AW3D, which is an offering of the most precise 3D maps covering all the world landscapes, uh, landscapes with 2.5 meter resolution. We obtain the data from the advanced land observing satellite called Daiichi and produce the most accurate 3D processing system and this information is already being used for radio network planning of 5G networks, for emergency response planning as a disaster simulation in case of, say, tsunami, and the designing phases of a hydroelectric power station infrastructure. In another case, in NTT groups, NTT and JAXA will jointly perform a proof of concept by utilizing, utilizing the low Earth uh, orbit satellite technology, MIMO, which is the abbreviation of the multiple input and multiple output, MIMO, 
and satellite sensing technologies, which could allow use of the broad and large data uh, with timely and high uh, speed transmission and utilize IoT sensor in locations where network is not fully covered. I know these are the just examples, but it shows the split of NTT and NTT data group to bring our analytical strengths to decode information coming from satellite data. We expect that the need of these capabilities will grow in the future and they will be more relevant in the decision-making process of cooperation and institutions, especially in solving environmental questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ogibara san for your, for your words. We also hope that, uh, that the small steps that, uh, that we take today to join uh, so many important actors contribute to, uh, to this step. So let me uh, now introduce you to Luigi Pasquale. Luigi is the CEO of Telespazio. We are having an old-fashioned uh, relationship uh, because before we, we go to any, uh, any um, uh, uh, coupling on our alliance, we are taking a long period of uh, cooperation through many steps uh, in projects. And now I think uh, we, are, we are really uh, far away in, in the understanding on the, on the mutual uh, relationship between the two companies. Telespazio is a global leader of geoinformation services um, and is very well positioned for environmental demands from society uh, that need this integration of Earth observation data. Luigi, I think with your day-to-day uh, -day experience uh, in so many cases, can you put some uh, hot spot case that could bring to, to the audience uh, the idea of what we are talking about uh, in terms of climate, environmental change, pollution of the sea, what are, what are you doing? Tell us some, some example that really can, can uh, lighten our, our thoughts. Thank you, thank you, Juan uh, Tomas, and uh, good morning, everyone. A special uh, thank for, to Cristina Garmenda and Satlantis for having invited me to this uh, very interesting debate. Uh, say hello to all the colleagues uh, who are um, debating and participating to this, uh, to this event, in particular to Daniel Callega, the DG, who has made an introduction very important which drives uh, the the, uh, the attention of all our uh, all, all players like ourselves, uh, in particular in Europe, because of the importance of the green deal and the digitalization uh, that that Europe is uh, is focusing on. Um, yes, uh, uh, Juan Tomas. I mean, uh, our company um, is, uh, uh, as you know specialized into applications and services of geoinformation. First of all, uh, uh, to answer to, to a number of specific needs which come from vertical markets that we serve, uh, our first goal is uh, to collect the largest variety of data. Uh, variety meaning uh, technical differences, uh, optical radar, uh, hyperspectral, and, and, other, and, and, and also performances. Of course, our main reference is Cosmos Skymed, which is, uh, as you know, the Italian constellation based on a radar pair of SAR, which is uh, uh, where we, Telespazio, EJOS, our subsidiary that we have together with the Italian Space Agency, has uh, the right to commercialize data and applications based on, on this uh, capacity. Cosmos Skymed uh, can be used for a wide range of services and applications. You know that. Uh, it, it's uh, it, it's observed Earth from space with high resolution in all weather and lightning conditions, which is typical of radar. Then, of course, when we, I say the largest variety of data to access, uh, the, the, the other refer important reference is Copernicus. Daniel has, has mentioned the, 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 the outstanding effort that Europe is doing in this program. And we, Telespaz and Geos, are uh, one of... Uh, main player in, uh, in, in Copernicus for, uh, for a number of applications, in particular for the emergency management and rapid mapping, uh, uh, mapping applications. But then, uh, uh, if we speak about the environment, and it was uh, uh, 
asking about uh, some examples. So we speak about the environment, we, we add also hyperspectral data, which are capable to measure chemical and physical characteristics of the, of the, of the surface. And we, are, we have developed a number of specific applications for climate change, protecting the environment and observing, measuring the causes and the effects of climate change, like uh, deforestation, or legal or illegal fires, monitoring natural parameters. There is also another important area in terms of environment that we have uh, we use to serve to our customers, institutional and, 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 and private, uh, uh, referring uh, the maritime ecosystem. Let's look to oil uh, uh, disasters or other risks which are, uh, uh, which are typically related with, uh, with, with, maritime, uh, with maritime applications. Then there are the uh, monitoring and exploitation of all natural resources, uh, and monitoring also of uh, 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 land uh, subsidies, which, uh, which may create particular risk for, uh, for the environment. Then uh, I think that we, not, we must mention agricultural services, because uh, through space uh, applications, so we are capable to support the agricultural development by having uh, paid a lot of attention to quality improvement, by uh, uh, particularly with the environmental sustainability, use of water and use of chemical uh, substances. So then, uh, uh, yes, we have uh, developed a large portfolio of offering to our customers these, these things based on the, uh, on the uh, attention uh, that space may play to citizens, to the environment. Thank you very much, Luigi. Uh, I think uh, it is not a casualty that uh, the invited distinguished guests today are those who, let's call it, pay the party. So uh, that finally uh, the space value has to be brought to customers, users, and to problem solving. So companies like Telespazio or NTT Data are crucial elements to the value chain to provide healthy development of the hardware, the upstream sector uh, where Atlantis belongs to. But that's, that's I think, the well thought, uh, this, this combination of upstream and downstream. Thank you very much. So I think uh, it wouldn't be fair that we didn't remember uh, the origin of Atlantis again. Uh, so we would like to, to convey uh, the words from the University of Florida, who really made the incubation of this project possible up till 2014. Uh, and still continues to be uh, playing a very important role in the low TRLs through the astrophysics department of the University of Florida. So I would like to have some words from David Norton. David, please. I'm David Norton, Vice President for Research at the University of Florida in Gainesville, Florida. And I just want to take an opportunity to congratulate the team from Satlantis for the remarkable accomplishment and milestone in the installation of the ISIM camera on the International Space Station. I'm sitting here outside in the state of Florida and somewhere overhead, this remarkable technology where the University of Florida has some role to play is flying over. And we're just really remarkably honored to be a part of this accomplishment. It is resources like the ISIM that can do detailed imaging of our atmosphere, of our oceans, of landmass where we can really understand and study and be better stewards of issues that cross boundaries of oceans, of continents, of peoples. We absolutely have to be a steward of this planet going forward for the generations that will follow us. And it's instrumentation like the ISIM and the forward thinking of a company like Setlantis that really can posture universities and researchers to be able to get the data and the information that they need in order to better advise for policy and understand the science and nature of our planet. I really want to congratulate all the teams on the three continents, the folks from University of Florida, in the US, in Spain, in Japan. It really represents what can happen when we come together globally to address an opportunity and address issues that are presented to future generations. So again, I uh, just want to thank you for the opportunity to be a part of this and congratulate again the folks at San Lannis and look forward to seeing fantastic images, maybe of me standing on this balcony. Thanks very much. I would like to give the floor to Masa Nagasaki now. Uh, Masa 
from SpaceBD uh, has been a fantastic partner to the realization of all of this. And I, I would like, Massa, to ask you uh, issues related to uh, to a manager and owner of a small company in space. No, this uh, difficult triangle of finance, market, and technology. Uh, how do you see your next steps uh, in in these three independent axes that have to be coordinated wisely? Thank you, Fanto. Uh, first of all, uh, hello everyone and good morning. Um, uh, my name is Mas Nagasaki, co-founder and CEO of SpaceBD Inc. Uh, thank you, Fanto, again, and uh, Christina uh, for the, the kind invitation to this event. I'm quite honored to be here to uh, celebrate the ISIM installation, which is an uh, uh, important milestone for the Saturnantis. And so, um, yeah, uh, I think to let the old participants and maybe the audience understand better, uh, I'd like to explain how we work together. So uh, as Wakata-san kindly mentioned that we, SpaceBD, are the, the JAXA's commercialization partner and uh, have exclusive rights uh, to use the iShip uh, adapter attached to the external platform on the International Space Station Japanese keyboard module. So we provide one-stop service from launch to the integration to the IC platform and with strong, strong support by JAXA. So uh, I'd like to extend my appreciation to the one team, which includes Atlantis and JAXA, and uh, our engineering team also did a great, great job. So, uh, so do you hear me, Fanto? Okay, so uh, let, let me continue. And then, so uh, I'd like to uh, tell you the how the friendship between Satlantis and SpaceBD started. So I first met Fanto in November 2017 in Estonia, which was uh, right after SpaceBD was founded. So uh, at that time, SpaceBD was a three months old baby and had nothing to sell. However, uh, Fanto and I had a coffee oh, together, yes, yes, yes. and uh, uh, he was so kind, and we immediately hit it off. And uh, I would say he's my first international friend in the space arena. After that, we saw each other again and started to explore uh, potential collaborations. And today, uh, our friendship has grown to become something remarkable, a wonderful international cooperation, which is a uh, very symbol of the International Space Station. So we, SpaceBD, aspire to foster uh, more collaborations around the world yes, by utilizing the International Space Station and through our services, uh, contribute to solving the world's problems. The, as you know, the ISIM instrument of Satranthis with its lightweight uh, design and the high, very high resolution observation ability provides effective solution for better environmental monitoring and con conservation. So uh, uh, to answering to the, the difficult question to Fanto, uh, but uh, space is, as many the participants said, uh, space is the future and uh, space is uh, uh, where uh, we work together. So the world is now needs uh, international cooperation more and more. So uh, we'd like to uh, provide uh, the, the solution to uh, in the space arena and then solving the world's problem. So that is maybe the first step to attract, even attract the finance uh, in terms of finance or, or any others. So uh, lastly, I'd, re I'd like to express my sincerest gratitude to everyone who is involved in the IC mission. And I also uh, look forward to many more years of great friendship and fruitful collaboration with Satrantis and all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh... Masa for your, for your uh, speech. Um, so it's now 12.20. Uh, we plan to have a, a closing with the vice president if she comes on time before uh, uh, before the starting of the connection to the to the ISS. Uh, so we will be uh, announced shortly that uh, she's able to join because she had a council of ministers first and she's going to be part of the conversation to the to the astronaut. So um, before that happens, um, um, I would uh, I would like to ask you, uh, Daniel, um, what do you think the European uh, Commission uh, uh, can do related to perhaps uh, observatories or monitoring of uh, these critical elements from a very broad perspective uh, related to the development of new 
policies like, for example, plastics in the sea and uh, the, the uh, quantification of who is polluting? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I was referring in my intervention to the, to the global challenges we are facing and the global uh, planetary challenges from the environmental viewpoint. And people uh, often speak about climate change, but they don't realize the, the scale and the man magnitude of deforestation, the problem of pollution in the oceans, the problems of desertification, the water challenge, uh, we think that we need to invest more in Earth observation. We need to we need to develop and to ask the scientists and industry to come with more sophisticated uh, elements that can provide us this information to allow us to take decisions. And it is not only to identify the situation; it is also to allow us to take preventive measures. The example of plastics. That you were mentioning is a very, very, it's a very, very good one. Uh, thanks to Earth observation, we can identify the areas. We I can also. You, if you sorry? allow me to, uh, to yes. interrupt, I can see the vice president is, is ah, in, in <laughs> over here. So, uh, excuse me, and no, we would no. like to welcome uh, the, the closing speech uh, from Teresa Rivera. Thanks indeed for for joining us and for giving a green flavor to this whole event uh, together with Daniel. So, uh, Vice President, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's uh, my, my privilege, not so much a speech, but just to express the gratitude and the admiration for the work you are um, carrying on. Um, but I also have a, a, a very warm a comment to Mr. Koichi Wakati from our common friend, Pedro Duque. So, the Minister of Science and Innovation in our cabinet, who was a former colleague of you. And he was very happy to know that um, we were having this conversation today. Because I think it is a very important endeavor to invest in research and development of the technologies that would allow us to understand better what it means for the planet, what we are doing. We've got a fantastic blue and green planet, and I think that all the development you have been promoting allow us to understand better how the cycles, the processes uh, work, and what are the threats and the measures and the menace that we have in front of us. And um, there are very few fields uh, with uh, uh, that provide such an important space for cooperation, cooperation between different countries, different regions technological cooperation with private uh, companies that uh, to feel to what extent it is important to invest, innovate and improve our capacities to, to do better things. And um, this appetite for green investors uh, and to learn and put in place steady technology investments um, combining public and private initiatives are fantastic. Very precisely in this um, point in time, where we are wondering um, what type of uh, recovery we want uh, to promote. After discovering how vulnerable we all are, because we all knew that we were vulnerable, but this is uh, very, um, very impacting. We are vulnerable on the same basis, for the same cause, at the very same time, all over the world. And um, that show us to what extent uh, we should be humble and we should be uh, well oriented when thinking on the type of planet, the type of uh, coexistence uh, we want to build in the time to come. So having a very well sound basis of knowledge and information in order to identify what we want to avoid, what type of risk we don't want to face and what type of um, processes, as I said, in the earth system uh, do allow us to understand better where to invest this uh, black atmosphere over uh, certain cities, uh, these uh, blue seas that suddenly become brown, or uh, that um, uh, atmosphere full of sulfur or NO2, uh, NO2 uh, dioxide, uh, well, 
<laughs> I think that um, are fantastic examples of um, what we can learn from this space and uh, to what extent the combination of the different space agencies all around the world can help into a, uh, good responses for the needs of the humankind. You know that Europe is making a great effort on understanding uh, the world, the Earth, uh, the Earth observation system uh, is enriched thanks to the efforts of uh, many different agencies all over the world, but also thanks to the developments, the technology developments that the private initiative have allowed us to come here. And um, my colleagues in Brussels uh, do fully support this type of approach. They understand what it means to work together. So these three pillars coming from the United States, Europe and from Japan are uh, fantastic uh, pillars to build this um, house that we want to be healthier, we want to be safer, we want to be richer in environmental and social terms. So thank you, thank you so much. I think um, it's, um, it's a very good experience uh, to be followed in the time to come. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vice President, uh, for your support here. We know that it was a logistical mess this morning to you, and nevertheless, you, you rushed back to the Vice Presidency to join the call and finally be with us. So I think we have uh, accomplished uh, so many goals. Uh, we are about to start the last part uh, of the event, and this is very complicated connection because uh, uh, we have to remember the last, the last connection was in 2003, and indeed it was with our Minister of Science, Pedro Duque, and it was uh, at the time uh, President Aznar. Uh, and still, the type of communication that is used is not very different to that technology over there. So we have an, we have an audio here that is, uh, is connecting the voice to the ISS, and then we have another video over there that is uh, sending the images uh, from the astronauts. So it's a, it's a quite uh, old-fashioned uh, connection that we have to deal with this in this second, second uh, part of the event. So we will be waiting for the signal from the ISS to perform. Uh, our colleagues are telling us that uh, the, the task was finally uh, fantastically performed. So the, we can say ISIM is, is in place and is now working. So the idea of, uh, of, of coordinating uh, one, one talking event uh, with, uh, with the level of the distinguished guests, uh, with the task of our engineers uh, and the astronauts making it fixed and finalize the, the party with the talking to, to Commander Cassidy to explain what, what happened was a bit risky, I have to say. But uh, at, at least the technical part is, is accomplished and now we, we have to see uh, that the communication is, is alive and it, it goes through uh, uh, properly. Good, mo good morning and <laughs> buenos dias. <laughs> I'm Chiaki Mukai, senior advisor to the Director General of JAXA and former JAXA astronaut. In October 1998, I flew on the space shuttle discovery, the STS-95 mission with Pedro Duque, the first Spanish astronaut mm -hmm and received the Prince of Astorias Award with Pedro for the accomplishments of the mission. Since then, I have had a deep relationship with Spain and I'm very honored to play a significant role as a moderator for this commemorative VIP call. Today, His Majesty King Felipe VI is joining us on the phone to celebrate today's important milestone for Spain with Chris on board the International Space Station. His Majesty, King Felipe VI, I'd like to kindly ask for your words, please. Well, hello. I, I, I think you're, you're handing it over to me now to, to speak. Is, uh, is that correct? I, I'm honored to be with everybody. I just want to make sure I'm not stepping on top of somebody else's turn. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ah, okay. Thank you very much. Arigato. It's a pleasure to be with you. I'm standing inside the, uh, the Kibo module on the International Space Station, as you, as you know. The space station is an amazing accomplishment of international partnership, as demonstrated by uh, by our meeting here here today. Earlier this morning, I installed the ISAM on board the the Japanese airlock uh, 
uh, there's a table that slides in and out that allows us to install equipment and experiments inside the space station and then slide them out into the airlock, do a series of uh, depressurizations, and then move the payload out to the vacuum of space where it can perform its task. And it's very exciting to think about what uh, what this ISAM will do. It takes such uh, very accurate photos of, of the Earth, and that, that's something that, that uh, we don't really have the capability of on board the International Space Station right now. We have a crew of five on board the space station. As you may have seen, we just had uh, two new crewmates, Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley, arrive on uh, the first manned SpaceX launch that happened uh, one week ago. So we are very excited to have a full complement of crew to perform uh, the true mission of the International Space Station, which is science and cooperation with our international partners, Russia, Japan, United States, Canada, and the European Space Agency, to execute missions just like this, the one that you guys, uh, all of you, are, are so familiar with. So it's truly an honor to be with you here today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Now, I would like to uh, invite to the Spanish side His Majesty King Felipe VI. I'd like to kindly ask for your words. Please go ahead, King. Uh, yes, hello. I understand uh, uh, you can hear me. This is the King of yes, Spain. King, I hear you loud and clear. Welcome to the International Space Station. I understand I'm, I'm talking to Commander Cassidy. Sir, uh, Chris Cassidy on board the International Space Station. I'm the commander of Expedition 63, and we have uh, on board with us myself and four, four crewmates. And it's an honor to be with you, uh, King. Well, uh, it's a really a pleasure for me, and uh, it's a very exciting moment. Uh, only once before, about 17 years ago, I had a chance to talk to the uh, International Space Station. Uh, so I'm so glad to, to do that today on, on a very special occasion since we are witnessing this uh, very tight collaboration between the technologies coming from different parts of the world. And, and Spain is, is really honored and, and proud to be part of this. So um, for me, obviously, it's it's a special moment. I've always been following tightly all the space programs, and, and I'm so glad that, that NASA also accomplished this this new step, uh, in incorporating a lot of the private initiative uh, for the launch, and uh, and of course uh, to to join to have a piece of equipment as sophisticated as this uh, camera on a Japanese module and being assembled by U.S. astronauts and, and uh, in a very multinational and collaborative uh, spirit is something very stimulating for all of us. And it, I think it's a great example for the world. And of course, uh, for us, it's uh, a, a leap forward in our will to participate in all the technological innovation and even in space programs. I understand that we still have yes, sir, I, time. I, I would like to you, your whole country, and all the the uh, folks, the technical people who who worked so hard to put this together and get it up here. Uh, I feel very fortunate to be the last one to touch it before it goes to space and performs its mission. And I couldn't agree with you more on uh, the importance of the international collaboration that uh, this one piece of equipment exemplifies. So, so. Um, from, from all of us on board the space station, we, we sincerely uh, thank you for you and the teams, international teams that provided us this equipment. And we're excited to see it deploy uh, as early as, as tomorrow, I think, is when it will is planned uh, deployment. So it's very exciting for uh, everybody. Well, uh, allow me to, to recognize and congratulate the effort uh, um, from yourself and and all the crew on board, and the NASA team, the JAXA team, and uh, Satlantis, uh, uh, you all have made a, a great uh, job, and I hope we will soon see the 
the products that will uh, come out from that that effort. Uh, I know it's been seven years of, of work uh, I have before this day, and where we hope that this is uh, also a start of a of a long period of collaboration in in that field. I want I wanted to also. Uh, highlight uh, that I, I understand very well the difficulty to perform these sort of projects. It's uh, when, when it's a, a new step, it's always a, a lot of issues that are involved. But uh, I think we are on a path of success. And uh, for our society, uh, more than ever, we need these uh, sources of, of good news and, and, and uh, hopeful news for the future. And as you know, we are all suffering this uh, huge crisis from the virus. And so these positive uh, events, I think, are a great, a great stimulus for all of us. So thank you for that, and, uh, and congratulations to NASA, to JAXA, to Atlantis, and to all those involved. Thank you, sir. Sincerely appreciate it. I would like to also uh, uh, greet uh, all the, the rest of the participants in the session this morning. Um, I think it was also a great experience from the part of our, our government, from uh, Cotec uh, in Spain and, and from uh, JAXA, and uh, also a special uh, greetings to, to uh, all the members of your crew. Uh, and I uh, wish you well, and I hope you you end up with a complete success of your mission, and that hopefully soon you will, we will come back home. Thank you, King and Chris. As the closing remarks, the ICM developed by Atlantics in Spain is the first commercial overseas customer for JAXA and Space BD the service provider for commercialized uh, use of the exposed platform of Kibo. With warm corporations uh, from Chris and NASA, it is an honor for JAXA to be involved in the giant leap for uh, space activities in Spain. I really enjoyed today's uh, commemorative VIP conference, and on behalf of JAXA, I'd like to extend appreciation to His Majesty King Felipe, Felipe VI and Chris for joining us today. Muchas gracias. The end of the, uh, the event. Thank you. Thank you as well. Uh, arigato to you too. It was an honor to talk to you. Take care, everybody in Scuba. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Take care. Thank you. But I think in the end, it was a very, I mean, a charming event. Uh, uh, I think it, it reflects uh, the the brothering of uh, of these uh, three countries together, uh, working now and uh, for the future. And uh, I would really uh, thank again JAXA, uh, NASA, Space BD. Uh, the, the European Commission, NTD Data, um, Telespatio, um, uh, and the rest of participants of the University of Florida to be with us today and have spent one long hour uh, talking about these two interesting topics. And moreover, that the task that had to be performed was successful. So thanks very much. Thanks to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, best luck for the time to come. Uh, we deserve a green and blue planet, well observed, uh, and I think that your camera will help all of us to, to get a thank better understanding of what's going on. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vice President. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. Bye-bye. <laughs>